Hello guys, welcome to AGTP Presents Stack to another episode. Uh, today is the part four, which is like long time you guys are waiting for this video. So finally, finally, I'm ready to make this video. So this is part four, right? And, uh, and also you guys already recognize that like I already, I released another part one. So that means I have two part one. Now a question why I released two part one. So the first part one I released, that one actually I have in my house, I have three physical machines, but most of you, maybe you don't wanna have three ESXi hosts. Yeah, three physical machines, right? So my uh, my goal is to show you actually how with one physical host, you can create a complete enterprise, enterprise level uh, virtual environment at your home with the VMware, right? Which is called VMware Home Lab. So that's what our goal, right? For this course. Now, yeah, that, that's why my second part, like actually the second video of first part is just, I showed only on one host. So this is our first video, right? So I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to share my screen and show you uh, step by step. So this is my channel, you know already. So how to, uh, this is the first one. VMware Home Lab, iDrag configuration, uh, RAID configuration, ESX instruction configuration. Same thing I have here. Step by step, iDrag, RAID, and ESX instruction configuration. So this is with, in here is, if, the difference is part one at the end, and in here you're gonna see part one at the beginning. So that's the difference. So this video, and also you can see that when I release it, the date. So this video has, Three um, with three SX, uh, three physical host, and this one is with only one host. And also on my part two video, I showed you guys like how to create uh, or how to deploy um, Active Directory. So in create, install, and configure. Install and configure Active Directory. Not only Active Directory, Active Directory domain controller and DNS server. And so the time I released this uh, part two, this time. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe this video, I have uh, two domain, uh, two DNS server. One is primary DNS, another is secondary DNS, right? So the secondary DNS and primary DNS, I put in the same network. So right now I'm planning to do something else because in reality, both DNS cannot be in the same subnet or same network. It can be different network or maybe in different data center in the remote location. So that's what I have a plan. So the one I built as a secondary owl decommission it and I'm gonna build new one and I'll show you on the new network, on the uh, remote network. So we have a based on our plan, if you guys, I believe you guys already know about, about it. So this is our plan actually. And also I changed a little bit of this plan. So you guys can follow this plan. So on our last video, which is number three video, right? Uh, lab uh, part three. Part three, I show you guys how to uh, install and configure vCenter 6.7, so 6.5, 6.7, 6.7.0, .7 and eight, all our installation process is same. Installation process is exactly same, but in this video, at the end, I show, I tried to show you guys how to create, um, what is called, a vSEN, but I wasn't able to show you because I had some technical difficulties. And also, right now I'm realizing I shouldn't do it this one. So I'm gonna make a completely different video with how you can do it in nested, you know, on a nested ESX environment. So BSEN gonna be a separate video. And also I have a, a BSEN video in my YouTube channel. Also you can watch that video. But I'll show you on the lab, like my sequence video, how you can create it. But for the BSEN actually, I'm gonna assign a very little amount of space just to give you guys a flavor of it. We don't gonna use it, but just to give you guys a flavor of it, that's it. So, and today's video, the fourth part of part um, part four is actually, basically I want to show you guys storage because as a VMware guy, we know uh, whenever we're gonna create a virtual machine, the reason we have a VMware environment, that means a virtual environment. So virtual means we'll be able to create a virtual machine, right? So to better utilize the VMware environment, um, you should create your virtual machine on your virtual environment, that's true, but 
why are you going to host it? What should, which storage you should be used? Local storage. But if you use the local storage, you cannot get the actual flavor of BM oil. So what you should do? So based on the BMR recommendation, if you want to utilize all the BMR feature, you're supposed to have a BMR cluster. And if you have a cluster, the cluster requirement is you have to have a what? Shell storage. But how are we going to like have ice cutty sand storage, fiber uh, FC sand storage? It's very expensive, right? We cannot afford it at our home. So that's what I'm going to show you as a demo to get a flavor of ice cutty sand. Ice cutty sand is like pretty expensive, but I have a software. Through the software, I'll show you guys how you can create, how you can create or utilize your local storage to make a iSCSI sand storage and also BCN storage. So we're gonna learn today um, NAS storage. NAS storage is network attached storage. I'll show you guys today. NAS storage, uh, BMR uh, NAS storage, iSCSI storage, and um, what else? BSEN, maybe, maybe not this video, maybe the other separate video because I have to create an SDSX and on, uh, on that environment, I have to show you till how you're gonna create uh, BSEN storage. So BSEN storage, I will have maybe part five with, with, with uh, an SDSX host cluster system. So today, I just go, I'm just gonna focus on two things, storage configuration. And for the storage configuration, you need to have some network configuration, but based on my diagram here, measure my structure, my architectural design. Uh, the network part should come later on, but anyway, without ne network part, I cannot maybe show you guys perfectly the storage, how you can connect the iSCSI storage, right? So today, we, and, and also I, I make some change here, you see? So number seven, we finish on our part three, now number eight, right? And I skip number six, you see here? Jump machine because jump machine is nothing is just a is just a virtual machine in your environment. So if you want to learn how to create a virtual machine, I have a video here and also uh, on my description box I will give this video link how to create a virtual machine. And also I mentioned here, don't make the common mistake that most of the system has been made. So you you should you shouldn't do that kind of mistake. So if you watch this video, twenty six minutes video, I know for creating a virtual machine is pretty long video. But anyway, if you want to know like each, each and every little parts to create, how to create like a, a, what it's called, um, like without any mistake to create a virtual machine, you should watch the full video. You should watch the full video. And it's just one time, 26 minute investment in your whole entire life. And you're not going to make any mistake to create a virtual machine. So please, please, please watch this video. So if you watch this video, you'll be able to create a machine. And if you are you have a machine, then you will have a uh, uh, like a jump machine. So jump machine is what? Now it's very important to understand what is the jump machine, why you need a jump machine. So I always prefer in my whole entire career, each and every place, whenever I join, I just look for first time, I said, can I have a jump machine. Why I have a jump machine? Because I want to do my all work, my the every day's uh, working, uh, what is called, uh, my every day's work I want to do through the uh, jump machine because I don't want to run anything from my laptop. So why? This is very important for a system admin because say you are deploying something, you're installing something, right? So if you run any software or any application and you're installing from your laptop to a server in your office environment. In the meantime, say for example, the instruction process will take maybe 30 minutes, maybe one hour, maybe two hours, right? The whole process is 50% done or 20% done. In the meantime, you have an emergency. You need to go outside. You need to step out. Like maybe you get a call from your family or maybe something emergency, right? So if you shut down your laptop, the operation will be disrupted, right? So whatever you are doing, or whatever you did like for like last 30 minutes or one hour effort, it will be gone. You have to start from the beginning again. So what's, what's the meaning to do it again and again, right? But if you start installing something or maybe doing maintenance or anything, whatever the job you're gonna do in, in your like day-to-day day -day basis, if you, run, if you do everything from your jump machine 
And if you shut down your computer, you will not have any kind of disruption of whatever you are doing. Everything gonna be run if you close or if you shut down your laptop. Because you the time you start the operation, you started it from your jump machine. And jump machine, where the jump machine is sitting? It's in your data center, right? In somewhere in your virtual environment. So you are not shutting down your virtual environment. You're not shutting down your virtual VM, which is your jump machine. So that's why I always prefer to build a jump machine and work from there. Whatever you're gonna do, whatever, what, whatever the uh, operations you're gonna do in your whole every day, just do it from the jump machine. That's why I always prefer to build a jump machine first. So the build a jump machine means it's a, just a vanilla flavor of uh, Windows. Just install a Windows operating system. It can be any operating system, Windows 2012, Windows 2016, 2019, 2022, or XP, well, sorry, uh, Windows 10 or Windows 11, whatever you want. But you are working for the uh, server environment, right? So it should be a server operating system, any version. So nowadays, everybody has 2016. So I can say 2016 or maybe 2019. So that's what I build here. You see here, I have a jump machine. So I install it. And after that, what I did, I added this machine with the domain. So how are you going to add it with the domain? I'll show you. And also, if you watch my video, I, uh, I believe you will know actually how to do that. And also, if I get a chance, I will show you here too. So whenever you have a jump machine, you can do run everything from your jump machine. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, let's get started, okay? And actually, I want to show you here. So 7.5, because I already put some uh, um, numbers here. So I don't want to mess up with the number. Uh, that's why in here I put like after this 7.5, that means on the standard switch, um, we're going to add more um, port group, standard port group. So before we do that, we have to understand what is the port group is, right? So each and every points I will describe, don't worry about it. Um, so just, uh, and also, and also today I'm gonna provide you guys, I will share it with, with, from my uh, Google Drive, I will share it with you guys. Uh, and I shared the link on my description box so you can download it and you can have your record. And maybe the IP address is not gonna be matched with you because your environment and my environment is different. Maybe it's, it's, you can have the same, same IPs or maybe different IPs, it doesn't matter. Whatever the sequence or submenu you use, just use it. Okay, the very important thing is whenever we have an ESXA host, I showed you guys when we did the RAID configuration. So if you follow my part now, uh, video number, uh, first part, uh, like part one video, the second video, part one. And in that, that video, I shows actually how you wanna uh, um, uh, like uh, do the RAID configuration on your one, uh, like not one physical uh, yes, uh, server. So, and where are you going to install the ESXi and, and the rest of the part, how are you going to utilize it, right? So, based on our part one, second video, I'll show you guys step by step here. So, first, I'm going to log into my ESXi. I know my, sorry, my vCenter. So, my vCenter is ready now because on our third video, we shows, um, I show, I showed you guys actually how to install and configure vCenter, right? And also, I tried to add, um, I, this is uh, this is my uh, uh, single sign-on account. Single is that's called single sign-on because it's a local administration account. By default, administrator add your uh, single sign-on domain. So single sign-on domain means activity domain. To the active directory, you can manage your whole organization, right? And this is single sign-on domain. That means it's a it's also a domain, like as a Active Directory. But with this domain, you can manage only the VM or environment. Only the VM or environment. So that's called, it's a VM or VSphere single sign-on. So I provided the name as a primary.local. Whatever it is, you can provide. So if you forget it, just watch my third video. You will know how I create this one, okay? That time I explained already. So just log in there.
So in all the time, try to use one password for all kind of installation. And that will help you because if you provide different, different password for different, different application or installation, most probably after one month, you're going to be forgotten. Okay, log in. Oh, what happened? I forget it. All right, now it's the right password. So, um, actually, from my third video, I show you guys how you're gonna create a data center and how you're gonna create a cluster, right? Forget about it. If you forget it, forget it. Don't worry about it. So I'm going to completely remove, or maybe I can add it. So I just add it here. I'm not sure why it's every time it shows host storage status. There's no status, no storage issues. Reset, the, reset to green, okay. All right, so today I wanna show you actually, if you go to the data store, what are you gonna see? Nest storage one, Nest storage two. Actually, I, I didn't show you guys how you can add those storage. Why I added this storage here? Why? Because in my here, here you see data store, I don't have enough space capacities, 550 gigabyte. Yeah, I have, in some case, maybe you don't have, right? So for installing SXI, uh, 10 GB space is enough. Because when you install the SXI, it consumed only four gigabyte of space. But recommendation is to reserve 10 gigabyte for ESXi. That's enough. But in my case, I have I just dedicated one full hard drive for my um, one hard drive for my uh, OS installation. So that hard drive has 550. That's why I reserved that hard drive or that um, storage uh, for ESXi. When I install ESXi, it it shows as a local storage data store. But there is another, some terabyte of space, space I have, some terabyte of space I have as a local, but it's not utilized here. So when I did the RAID system on part one, if you look at my part one RAID system, part, part one video number two, if you look at that one, you're gonna see, I when I configured the RAID, I reserve some um, storage space, like I created a, RAID 5 and it's one point something terabyte, but it's not showing here as a local, it's not showing. So I have to show it first. So how are you gonna claim that storage? How are you gonna claim that storage? So I'm going to show you how you're gonna claim it. So if you select the host, go to the, select the host first from the center and go to the configuration tab and then storage adapter, you see here, and there is a two storage adapter block, iSCSI and another one, BMH, BA1, SAS storage. So whenever you have a local data store, it's gonna show you as a SAS storage. You see here, 1.464 terabyte. So this storage, when I configured the RAID, but it's not showing as a local here. If you come here, it's not showing here, right? So within short time, it's gonna show. How are you gonna configure it? So now we are learning storage configuration. If you have a, some local storage, but it's not showing on your ESXi, how are you gonna claim it? So the process is you have to select the ESXi host. You can do it from the host level, like uh, this, this interface called vSphere Web Client, vSphere Client, right? vSphere Web Client, web. Whenever you access vSphere environment, VMware environment through the vCenter and the, whatever the interface you, you're looking here, that's called a vSphere Web Interface. But if you log in directly on the ESXi, which is, uh, which is which one? This one. You can just say uh, you can completely you can you can log in through the uh, the whole name with the whole name, or you can log in with the IP address. Whole name means your FQDN. So you can say HTTPS colon slash slash this or IP address. So advanced. So lo mo most of the case, some of the students like they said, oh. Uh, some of the people they said, oh, this is wrong. There is uh, some issues. Actually, this is not an issue. You don't have the certificate. That's why it's just alerting you, nothing else. And you know already what you are doing, right? So don't worry about it. Just go to the advanced and then proceed to the host, unsafe. It's, it's fine, completely fine. So log in there. 
root n okay so i just logged in this this host is managed by b center right that's why it says this host is being managed by b center you just your acknowledgement it's okay nothing else so manage right so you can add storage from here or you can add storage from your b center so whenever you have a b center b center is pretty easy way to add storage just so see here is package services hardware but in from here it's a little bit tricky and hard monitor host So in here, from here, if you want to add the storage, the, the one we didn't claim yet, or how are we gonna claim the local storage? How, so the question is how you claim local storage for a USX site. So you can claim it two ways. Your answer should be two ways. One is you can go from the vSphere client, vSphere client, uh, vSphere host client, vSphere host client. Your answer should be, it can be done by two ways. One is from BSPR host client, which is this one. BSPR host client means you directly log into host. And BSPR web client means you log in vCenter and you are accessing the host through the vCenter. So this, this interface called BSPR web client and this interface is called BSPR host client. Remember, web client and host client. So whenever you browse from host client, you can add it from them. That means you are, you are you are able to see only one host. But if you come here, if you have a multiple host, you can see all the host here. All the host you can see from B center, right? And I feel comfortable from the B center, but anyway, I'm showing from both place. So storage, how are you gonna claim unused space, which is not showing here, which you already have as a local, but it's not showing here. How are you gonna claim it? So you have to go to the storage on the left side, right click on it, And then you can say new data store, new data store. And then uh, amount NFS data store, expand existing, add an extra existing BMFS data store. Okay, click next. But it's not showing here, right? Okay, so in here, you will be able to claim only in here, you'll be able to claim only the one you have, or maybe the NFS data store. NFS means NFS means NAS storage, network data storage, and network file system. So you can mount NFS data store. Whenever you mount it, it's going to be NFS. But the storage system is is called NAS network data storage. I'll show you today how to add a network data storage. So let me show you first network data storage. If you have a device, so for example. I'll show you just as an example. So I have a storage system, 10.15, uh, sorry, 92.168.1.102. So this is my WD cloud storage. So if you guys want to have this, you can buy it from, maybe you don't need to spend too much money. Uh, uh, I'll show you, I, I'll give you guys a link. So maybe you can buy it with um, less than hundred dollar, maybe eighty dollar. So you can you can buy that one uh, from eBay. eBay eBay all the time they sell uh, used uh, devices. So you can buy it with uh, like around sixty to eighty dollar. Uh, you can have it like um, two terabyte of space. But make sure when you search it, you search it with. Um, network attached to WD, WD My Cloud um, NAS storage. NAS, make sure NAS storage. Otherwise, you cannot mount it with the VMware. All right. So I'm going to log in there. Okay. All right. So I have already added here. If you guys 
you know here, you see, uh, okay, I'm going to cancel it. You see here, I have already nest storage here, right? So if you want to add more, you can add more. So I already added, I don't want to remove it because I have all the virtual machines running from the nest storage right now because I don't have enough storage to run all our virtual machine because we already created Active Directory machine, right? Two DNS machine, right? Also jump machine and also our uh, B center. So Active Directory, two DNS, that means three machine and also what? A B center, four machine. So four machine or four or five machine, are we, I'm sorry, five machine here, you see here? Four or five machine, we already deployed. ELS, BPW, DNS 02. Okay, this DNS 02, DNS 01, 02, yeah. So everything is now running from share storage. Where? From share storage. From the share storage, right? Which is from NAS, because I don't have another space on my local drive, which is local storage, which is this one. This one, uh, I have only 500 something, so I cannot maybe distribute with this. So that's why I have everything on here, okay? On the share storage. And <clears throat> I wanna show you actually how to add another machine here, right? Sorry, uh, storage. So what you need to do, if you have, I'm telling you again, if you have the WD Cloud, then you, then you can actually in your uh, professional environment, in your real environment, in your company, they will have maybe more expensive NAS storage device, but the I recommended for WD NAS storage device because it's cheap and you can have a flavor of NAS. You can have a flavor of NAS and also you can practice at your home. So if you spend 60 to $80, you can have NAS storage flavor. So if, if you have a NAS, then go to the share option and create a folder. Create a folder like this, share name, you can say anything, whatever you can say, as storage or so actually name doesn't matter. So I created the previous one as a NAS, NAS, NAS 0102 and now as 03 maybe. Share storage for ESXi. It doesn't matter whatever you want and apply. So you just created, right? But so based on my days, okay, what we have on here, this configuration. So everything is off, right? Only the nest and the NFS access is on. And so we're gonna do the same thing here, nest three. Everything is off. Everything is off. Just only one thing, what? NAS. NAS is? Oh, another important thing you see here, if you look at here, NAS1, well, the admin read and write, right? But if you go here, by default, this one, this is deny, but you have to have a both. Read and write, okay. And NFS. And whenever you en enable the NFS, it's on, right? Everything else is off, just only NFS. Access is on and configure. And here you have to put star. And read write, of course, on and apply. Star means you can assign this storage for all of your ESXi in your environment. If you don't have a star, then you can, you'll be able to send only the one host. You have to mention the host IP address here, your ESXi host IP address. But if you you star, that means you can use that storage for all of your ESXi. So that should be the configuration apply. So now you see, you have a path here, mounting point. This is the path. So I'm going to copy the whole thing. Actually, I don't need whole thing, but first I'm going to copy this one. And now I'm going back to my ESX environment. So you can add here, right click, new storage, right? Create a new BMF uh, mount NFS data store. Next, and name, you can say NFS 03 or something, whatever, name doesn't matter. What is the server IP? I'm just going to paste uh, the whole thing, but I know what is the IP address of it, right? So just IP address of it, nothing else. And I'm going to cut this part because I need just IP address and I press share. Where's the share? Share is this one, the one I just cut it, right? So I paste it here again. And this is NFS3 because this uh, NAS storage support only NFS3. And click next and finish. You see here, now I have NFS3 storage. So that's how you're gonna attach share storage. 
share what kind of share storage nas storage share nas storage i believe all of you guys understand very clearly right this is how you're going to add and also you can do the same thing from here if you want you can come here the data store not directly from action you can say from action storage and new data store or or right click on it go uh, right click on the uh, um, uh, SXA host right and then storage new data store same thing same same so VM, uh, you have to go to the nfs next and nfs3 next and data store name say nas 04 or something uh, folder name this is the path right and server name you know the server name 192.168.1.102 right and then then next it's gonna be add but i'm not i already did it so i'm not gonna do it again okay cancel it's already there right added here and it's showing here right all right so now we already learned how to add a share storage but we we don't know actually how to claim unused. So unused, unused space you cannot claim from the yes, BSPR host client. So you have to do it from BSPR web client, like from the B center. So whenever you add the host with the B center, you can claim it. How are you gonna claim it? Right click on it and go to the storage, right? Or go to this action, select the host, go to the action, go to the storage, same thing, same option, new, and then BMFS. So create a BMFS data store on disk alone, click next. And you're gonna see whatever the unused space here is gonna pop up here. If you have a, this, I have only one partition of, because uh, for disk, I have a one partition with RAID 5. So if you have a more disk with another RAID system, you're gonna see here the second one, third one, fourth one, if you have more. So what are you gonna say? This is my local storage, right? You can say local, or something local hyphen data store, whatever you want, data storage, data storage, local data storage or something, whatever, it, it, it's up to you, it's up to you, whatever the name, but it should be based on your, or you can mention about the host name. It's a local storage, we can, you can have a multiple, multiple ESXA host which has a local storage. So how are you gonna define this storage is coming from what? So you can you can you can have a standard name. So local ls ls means local storage, right? So local storage. You can say local data store l lds local data storage. From where? Host zero one. It's more specific, right? And then select this one, click next, click next. So actually I should do ELS host zero one. I, I did only host zero one. That should be more specific. So I'm adding So you have to wait. It shouldn't be take that long, but uh, the SXA host I'm using here is like old machine and that's why it's pretty slow, but whenever you're gonna do it on your uh, like your real environment, like your office environment, it's gonna be done by boom, like within minutes, because those machine, of course, it's gonna be faster machine and it's gonna be a new machine, right? So you, you need to, you don't need to be worried about it. Just wait a little bit. Okay, so I wasn't actually able to do that. Uh, I can, I have another two hosts, but anyway, um, it just needs to be formatted and it's gonna be shows automatically here, it should be. So I'll show you another two, another host. I have, I have another two hosts. So I'm going to add it on this cluster, but 
Don't worry about it. If you don't have this other cluster, we just need to check your RAID system. Maybe my RAID system is broken. That's why, because I did a lot of experiment with this. That's why it's happened maybe. Uh, I wanna add uh, my other host here. Oh, before I add this host, I want to show you another thing. So how I add ELS host 01.ELS.com because I created this one. It's a fully qualified domain name. Actually, when I installed the SXI, I set it up IP address, but right now I'm not using IP address, I'm using a name, which is called fully qualified domain name, hostname dot my domain name dot com, right? So ELS.com. So that's called a FQDN, fully qualified domain name. How you can create it? If you look at here uh, on my DNS server, ELS, you see here, I have the DNS entry. So how are you gonna create it? Right click on it, new host record, and then type anything, whatever, let's say, say for example, um, ELS host, host 04, right? And make sure you have a PTR record created on your reverse lookup zone. So you have to have a check mark on it and the IP address, whatever the IP address you have on your ESXA. So just for an example, say 192.168.1.1, 14, but something, right? So just add host. Add host is gonna add the host. So later on, if you want to add, see here, host number four, if you double click on it, this is the fully qualified domain name. So whenever you add the SXA host on the B center, you can use either FQDN or you can use IP address. So most of the case, most of the environment, they use FQDN. That's how I get this name. So actually I don't have this host, I'm going to delete it. Just for show you guys, I created this one. Oh, I want to show you before I did it. I want to show you here. Reserve lookup zone. You see here, reserve lookup zone. If you select this one, it's not showing here, right? 14. Oh, yeah, it's showing here. 14. So yeah, I, I'm going to delete it from here. I don't need it. And also I'm going to delete it from here. I don't need it. I just show I just show you guys how actually I get these three. So now you know we have this, right? ELS. Host zero two. So I'm gonna add these two hosts. It's a physical host actually. If you guys don't have three hosts, don't worry about it because in your home lab maybe or you shouldn't have like three hosts. But I have three hosts. I'm going to add it here. So how are you gonna add a host? I click on the cluster and then say uh, add new host. So here is the options, and here is the options. So this is my number. You can add all together, three. So it's root for all the same root and the password, I have the same password. Okay, password is same. So I'm going to add all. Okay, and it's for certificate. It says select both all together and click okay. And click next, click on finish. So within short time, these two hosts is going to be added on my inventory. This is the inventory, decentral inventory. And it's gonna be added under the, under the cluster. All right, so now it's added as a maintenance mode. So I have to right click on it, right click on it, exit the maintenance mode. I click on it, exit the maintenance mode. Okay, so these two hosts is already added and we already shows here. There's some alert show. Uh, this host is probably vulnerable, vulnerable of this blah, 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 blah. Says so a surface warning is fine because the first time when you add it, it's gonna show you like this. All right, so I have three hosts now, right? And each and every host, what I have, how many data store I have? Oh, sorry, data store. This one has some zero data store, right? It doesn't have the NAS storage. This one has not NAS storage, right? So how are you gonna add the NAS storage here? Oh, yeah. And also you don't have the local storage, but each and every machine has a local storage. If you log in individually like this, you're gonna see it has a local storage. So actually I'm going to sign out from here. Uh, sign out from here. Log out. Okay. So now the one I tried with the host one, the same thing I'm gonna try with the 
post number two. So what I have to do, which is unused space, right? I'm gonna claim it. Select the host, go to the configuration and select the SAS drive. And it's gonna show you here, right? In here. So the, why I'm, I'm telling you to go here, just to look at it. So I have 2.45 terabyte of storage. Already I have a partitions inside my ESXi. When a, inside my physical server, actually not ESXi. So, but it's not showing on the ESXi interface, right? So how are you gonna claim it? Right click on it, go to the storage, new data store and BMFS, click next. Oh, strange. Strange is not showing, I'm really strange. Privilege, okay, let's see, is there any other? Oh, sorry, it's already, because previously I used these two as a vCent, that's why it's already utilized. It's already utilized, I have to, uh, I have to remove it. Okay. Maybe it's gonna take a little bit of time. I'm going to delete it, so I'm not sure how long it will take. Again, okay. let's check it again. Okay, it's clear. And let's check that number three. Maybe that, that one has also the same thing. Where is, oh yeah, so okay. And maybe this one has the same thing because I used previously for, yeah, this one has some problem. All existing partition on this device. So, all right, anyway, uh, I'm going here again. So let's check. I, we already checked this one, right? It is partitions, there is no partitions, it's empty and cancel it. So now I, we can maybe claim it. So go to the storage, new data store, BMFS already selected. Now it's, now it's showing here, right? So the data store name, what the data store name? The name should be, okay, it's a local storage, local data storage for what? IPN, you can say, uh, this is ELS post 02. That's more specific, right? and BMS number six or five, whatever you want, you can select it. But this version is, is support up to six. You can go here, it's, it's not an issue. Click next. See here, this is how it should be worked, the post number one, but somehow it's not, doesn't work because of maybe some of the hard drive is um, like, I have a bad hard drive there. Maybe that's, that's another issue. Okay, now it's up to you. You wanna utilize the whole thing or you gonna do it like this? You can maybe up because you have you have total two point five terabyte. So for now, if you want, okay, I want half. You can do half. If you want full, you can do full. It's up to you. Click next and finish. So it's already done. See here, it's not, not done yet. Actually, it's going to be done. Update B S N configuration host one. Okay, so host one actually I had issues. It has a B S N. I don't want this, eh? I, I'm trying to, to erase the partition. Okay, I see, okay, right? Okay, let's see. I'm not, right now I'm not worried about this. This is 100% and now it's gonna be take time. But okay, anyway, so host number two we did, right? So let's check the data store. Selected the host number two and data store, see here? So it's utilized. Now it's not, it's not unclaimed anymore. It's claimed already. We already claimed it, right? So it's available for this. It's a local storage actually. This storage, you cannot get it on host number three. Host number three, you can get it. So if you create any virtual machine here, that machine is gonna be seen only this storage with this host. If, if this host goes down, you will not get the virtual. Whatever the virtual machine you're gonna host on this storage, you will not get them if this machine is down. So that's why it's very important Whenever we, we create a virtual machine, we're gonna create on a share storage. All right. Okay. Now you can ask me why I'm like 
claiming this local storage because we have some plan through this local storage we're gonna see how we can create a vision and also we're gonna practice with ice cache we're gonna create ice cache just using our technique but in reality you shouldn't use that local storage okay number three so i'm going to utilize same way same thing i'm doing what you need to do right click on it storage new data store right bmfs click next you're able to see here right it's 2.73 terabyte of storage and data store name you can say local data storage hyphen els host 03 so that's how you know this storage is coming from host number three right more specific VM6, okay, no issues. Oh, by the way, you should do, okay, anyway, do it, six. And whole thing, whole space, next, and finish. So within short time, it's gonna show, see here, it's showing here, 2.7, okay. So now this host, I have a local storage. This host, I have a local storage, and this host, I have it, but, but what? Not showing okay let's try it's not going to show because you see here it's still updated the disk partition so it's not done yet uh if it's not done yet i don't want to spend too much time here uh, i'll just try to see actually what it shows it's still 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 is going so cancel it i'm not one i don't want to do it okay so now i want to show you guys actually I'm going to build a virtual machine. I'm going to build a virtual machine on the share storage. Oh, before I do that, I want to show you actually. So this host has a just only local storage, right? If you go to the data store, the third number host is zero. This one host is zero. Like only the share storage, only the uh, local storage. But think about it, you have only one host. In that case, you don't need to be on it, right? You will have local storage, but you will have NAS storage, right? Right? But I have three hosts, that's why I'm showing. But if you have, sometimes you can show up. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Okay, NAS storage. So this NAS storage, this is extra thing I'm showing you. So whenever you have a NAS storage on your environment, I want to show it on, uh, on other cluster system. Like whenever we're going to build nested ESX, I will show you there also. How you can add a NAS storage and then how you can apply to all other Yes, actually, if you have a 50 SXI, how are you going to add for all together? So that's what I'm going to show you. So how you add this NAS storage, you log into the SXI and then you add it, right? But now on the from the vCenter, you have this host has a three NAS storage data store, right? How are you going to add these three with all of your rest of the host? It's pretty simple. How? It's pretty simple. How if you go to the data store, Okay, say for example, this one, this storage, you want to add it to your other host. So you just go to the data store, right click on it, or, 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 or what you can do, or what you can do here, right click, uh, storage, new data store. So you can say NFS, this is, but, but this, this way you cannot do that. The reason is you have already that storage, right? Already attached. So what you can do, you, you don't need to go through this way. So you have to go to the data store and which NAS storage you want to apply for all other hosts. See, for example, just think about you have 50 SXI hosts. Only one host has this NAS storage attached, but you want that NAS storage to attach all other 49 hosts. How are you going to do that? So right click on it, very simple, right click on it. And then mount data store to additional host. Mount data store to additional host and then it will show you 49 host list here and you just select here like this it's going to be select all together all 49 together but if you want to do some selective host then just select like this click next okay it's already done boom how how you know it's already done if you go to the host, you're going to see it's showing three hosts. So now select this one. Only one host is showing, right? Right click on it, mount it with all 49 or 
I have two. If you think about 49, say 49. It's going to show you shortly here. See? Now three hosts is mounted with this data store. Do this one. Right click on it. And what are you going to do? Mount. I'm showing you again and again, again and again. So that's how you can understand better. Okay. So all three hosts is showing, right? It's pretty simple, pretty easy. So you have now NAS storage with all of your ESXi, right? So, but in your case, it's generally one ESXi, right? One ESXi is fine. So what are you going to do? I'm going to build a machine based on our plan today. What's plan? Uh, number eight, because of seven, and then I have to create 7.5, which is iSCSI send, B-Motion, uh, nested PM network, and to claim the iSCSI send. So our main target is today to show you some network configuration and very important thing, which is your SAND storage. iSCSI SAND storage is very important iSCSI storage. So for iSCSI storage, because I don't have money like a one and a half million dollar I don't have to spend for my iSCSI SAND storage, right? So how I can get the same flavor, SAND storage flavor without any money? I'm gonna show you that one right, right now. So there is a tools you need. Before you install any tools, I'm going to, uh, but I need a virtual machine. So with one, virtual machine, Windows virtual machine. Uh, on top of that, I'm gonna install. So first I need a virtual machine, Windows virtual machine. And then um, after that, I'm gonna install as tools. It's called um, Starwin. And through that tools, I will be able to create a sand storage. But how are you gonna get the space? <laughs> That's the interesting part. So where from, where from you get the storage? So this local storage you see here, this local storage, I'm going to attach this local storage on my virtual machine. But when I create a virtual machine, the machine C drive, the machine main storage, I'll take it from share storage. Because why share storage? Because if for something goes wrong with my host number one, my host number two will be available, right? And this storage is already, already attached with the other two. If this goes down, the storage is available for in this two. If both host is down, this storage is available for this host, right? So my virtual machine never gonna be down. It's just gonna be moved from one host to another host. So that's why I'm gonna build a virtual machine on this shared data store. So, and also, this is how you're gonna learn actually how to create a virtual machine. I, right now I'm going to explain it. And also, you're gonna know how to create a, a jump machine. So the jump machine and that the one I'm going to create the same way, this is the same way for like thousands of millions of virtual machines is the same way. So now for our requirement, I need to build a machine for sand storage. And also you're gonna learn, I skip this one, be a uh, jump machine. You're gonna learn the jump machine, how you create it, right? Same thing. I just name it as a jump machine, nothing else. All right, so I'm going to create a machine. It's gonna be your our sand storage, sand BM. So I can name it, okay, let me go here. Let me go here. So I'm going to create host and cluster view. Any host, I can choose any host, it doesn't matter. So for example, maybe third host, okay? Right click, or maybe I can select my cluster. It doesn't matter. So anyway, again, I'm telling you, you will not have this cluster now because I have I have three hosts, that's why I have a cluster, but you don't have, you have only one host, you don't, you don't need to have a cluster. You just add the host under the data center, that's it. That's it, forget about my cluster. So right click on it, or maybe right click your uh, host. It doesn't matter, whatever whatever you want. Something is failed. Yeah, I know my, um, my this host has issues. Update this is here. Anyway, right click on it, and then go to the new virtual machine. I'm going to create a new virtual machine. So create a new virtual machine, click next and provide a name, um, meaningful name all the time. So my, all the machines name is ELS first, ELS. Then uh, it's a virtual or production, so it's the virtual machine. And so it's my virtual production P. If it's a development D, if it is stage then S, and then uh, application related. What's, wh why I'm building this, this machine? So this machine I'm building for what? Oh, another thing you can mention, this machine is I'm building on my Virginia data center or my remote data center. 
maybe just think about we are thinking we have a two data center one is virginia another is new york ny so uh this one is in ba just ba so that's how we know this is this machine is sitting in in our virginia data center it's just a naming convention nothing else it it, it should like it's not like you're gonna it's not mandatory you have to have the same name you're gonna follow your company's naming standard okay i'm just explaining mine and this is a sand storage right i so you can say i scan right i s a n i send that's it nothing else and expand it expand it nothing else so it's just data center it's next and then which host you can select other host also but i selected this host it's fine and in your case you should have only one host right because you don't have too many hosts i have one you have we'll have only one physical machine right so click next and why are you gonna build this machine that's very important don't build any machine local storage don't build it all the time share storage if you want to utilize you can build it there is no issues but the recommendation is don't do it in your real environment because you want to utilize vmware all the features if you want to utilize all the features like a uh, high availability drs this uh, uh, drs which is distributed resource scheduler bmotion if you want to use the whole cluster or high availability features, you have to use share storage. That's why you should build all the machines on a share storage. Either it can be NAS or iSCSI or FCCN. It doesn't matter any kind of share storage. So right now we have available this share storage, right? So I'm going to build on this share storage, NAS01, or NAS0, NAS02, anyone. It doesn't matter. Click next. And compatibility with ESXi 6.7 and or later. So what does it mean? It means right now I'm building a virtual machine on top of a ESXi and that ESXi version is 6.7. That's why it's showing by default 6.7. But in your environment, if you have a cluster with 6.5 ESXi or 6.0 ESXi, so for some reason, say for example, you have three ESXi hosts in a cluster. One ESXi host is 6.7 and the other is 6.5 and the other is 6.0. But first host, you build a machine with 6.7 compatibility and your ESX machine is down. So then what gonna be happen? Your virtual machine, the BM you deployed, that not gonna be moved from your first host to second host because it's not the BM is not compatible with your second ESX host because the second ESX host is running 6.5. So if you have that kind of environment, you should be aware of it. You should change it to 6.5 or later. I'm just giving you an example. But in my environment, I have all 6.7. It doesn't matter if I choose 6.7. If I keep default, it doesn't matter. But for your case, maybe most of them are like, till now, a lot of the organizations, they have 6.5. So that's why I'm just telling you be aware of it when you create a virtual machine. Click next. And Windows, guest family. It can be Windows, Linux, or other operating system, right? So in, in our case, it's the Windows. We know we are building why we are building this. And what kind of operating system? I'm gonna build this operating system 2019. So what is 20, where is the 2019? So 2019 is not available here. So you can say 2016 or later. I click next. And now you need to select the CPU. How many CPU you gonna assign? So I gonna assign the CPU, say eight CPU, eight CPU, but now what it shows? Socket number eight. How many socket? Eight socket with Per socket, I'm going to utilize one core, which is completely wrong configuration for the CPU perspective, completely wrong. Because in my physical machine, I don't have four core, four core, sorry, four socket. I don't have eight, eight socket. I have only two socket. I have only two socket. So I have to make it two. How I can make it two? If I go four, now it's two, right? Four times two is eight. This is the right configuration. That means I'm telling that the to virtual machine is going to be used total for B CPU, virtual CPU, B CPU. But how it's going to be distributed with two socket, utilize both socket on my physical machine. And <clears throat> from each socket, utilize four core, four core from each socket, and it will make a B CPU. 
And also make sure CPU hot plug is enabled. Why? The reason is the reason you should be enable the hot plug because on the fly, so for example, virtual machine that this production machine is running and it's suffering for CPU, you need to, you need to increase the CPU. It's already 95% consumed, but if you want to <clears throat> increase it on the fly when the machine is running, you can do that if you have this hot plug enabled. But if you don't have this, you have to power off, then, then you have to do it. Otherwise you cannot do it, okay? So that's what I'm going to show you. All right, so uh, don't forget to enable this one. And then go a little bit down. You don't need to do anything here, memory. So the memory reservation, memory reservation, right? So four, or maybe you can, uh, you can standard is four, standard is four, and standard CPU is four, memory is four, but I'm gonna assign more memory, more CPU here, because I will use that machine for creating an iSCSI storage. So all the virtual machine you're gonna install on that iSCSI storage. So it's gonna be a lot of transaction happen and this machine needs to be support. So maybe in future we have to up, if I increase more CPU and also more uh, memory, but initially I'm going to sign eight, eight GB of memory, but expand the memory all the time. Whenever you configure the virtual machine, expand it. And I have a complete video here, how to create a virtual machine. See here, how to create a virtual machine, don't make the common mistake that most of the system admin do. So please follow this one. Um, and memory and then expand it and say, uh, well, 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 it's, it's fine, this one is fine. And the same thing here, hot plug, memory hot plug. If you want to do on the fly, that means one machine is running, live mode, you can add more memory enabled. Now hard disk, 40 GB for installing the, um, for installing the ESXi, uh, sorry, um, any operating system like Windows 2019 or 16, you should have at least 60 gig of, actually not 60, 40 is enough because uh, when you install the 2016 or 2019, it's gonna consume around 30, 30 gigabyte. So don't, I'm, I'm not gonna take any risk. I'm going to assign 80 gig. And also the most, 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 most important thing, you have to expand this one and make sure this provisioning, thin, this is by default thin provision because I'm using NAS storage. But if you, if you use, uh, uh, I schedule same storage, all local storage, you're gonna see there is a three story, uh, this provisioning. Thick provision, laser zero, thick provision, eagerly zero, and then thin provision. Make sure you use thin provision, thin provision, make sure. Right now I have only one option because I'm using uh, NAS storage, my NAS storage, the one, the, the NAS storage I have is just only support thin provision. That's why I have thin provision. But, Make sure you change it to, by default it's gonna be thick. Don't use thick provision. Maybe another video I will explain what is the thick and thin. But this video I'm just going to tell you, use thick, uh, thin provision. Okay. And uh, nothing else, network, BM network is fine. It's just by default. And so now this is, uh, and also another, another thing you need to do, BM options tools, make sure BMR tools, check this one and this one. So that's a complete virtual machine configure. That means it's a virtual machine, but it's gonna act as a physical machine. They say virtual machine, your first virtual machine, um, or maybe second, whatever, because we already built virtual machine for our Active Directory, for our DNS, right? So this is actually the third or fourth one we are building. And exactly same way you're gonna build for your job machine, right? So this is the way you can do that. That's done, you can click next. But one thing I skip, which one is here? Uh, 
operating system. I didn't choose the operating system ISO file. What kind of operating system? Windows 2012, 2016, 2019. So in the beginning, we say this 2019. So I have to have a 2019 ISO file on my data store. So previously, if you don't have, you have to upload it. You have to upload it to the data store. How are you going to upload it? I'll show you after this video, okay? But right now I'm showing you, I'll show you right after this, okay? Right after this, how you're gonna upload uh, all the operating system ISO file to your data store. But right now, because I cannot skip this window, that's why I'm going to complete this one first. I already uploaded the ISO file. So go to the data store ISO file, and then it will take you to the, your storage. So which storage has a your data store? I know. I have here NAS under the NAS01. If you expand it, you're gonna see it here, ISO folder. I created it, ISO folder. And also I have I have already uploaded here operating system. You see here, I have a lot of ISO file here. I, I, I'll upload it here previously. So I will show you actually how you can do that. So you have to have it before you create the virtual machine, okay? before you create deploy Windows operating system. You have to have it. I already have it, that's why. I'm able to do that, but if you don't have it be before you build this one, make sure you have available. Or if you don't have it, what, gonna do, what are you gonna do? Let me show you. Actually, so think about you don't have it. So that means you cannot do that, this configuration? Yes, you can do that. Click next and finish, done. The virtual machine is created, right? See here, virtual machine is created, but you don't have the ISO file. So how are you gonna add an ISO file? You have to go to the your, USXM, any, any one of the USXM machine in your environment, go to the root and then go here and go to the storage and see, for example, here, NAS, right? I have here, go to the, your storage, whatever the storage you want to upload all of your ISO file, you have to make a plan. So I have, a, I, I already planned that I'm gonna upload my all the ISO file. It's not just only the Windows ISO file. It can be Linux ISO file. It can be other application um, ISO file. So go to the, select the store and then go to the browse options. And from the browse, you see NAS and you will be able to create a folder under this. Whenever you select this one, you can, you'll be able to create a folder. I'm going to create a folder like this. You can say, uh, IS. So I have already named ISO, so I can say ISO 02 or something and create a directory. See. See, I have now ISO 02, right? So you select this one. And so whenever you select the ISO 02, that means now you selected this folder, right? And now go to the upload and upload an ISO file. So what kind of ISO file you gonna add? So go to the download folder. You see, I have a one ISO file here. I'm, as an example, I'm just showing you this one. I click OK, open. Now this one is uploading to my data store. In which folder? Here. If you don't select the folder, it's gonna be uploaded here outside. So make sure you select the folder after you create, you see it is going to upload. So within short time, after a short time, we're gonna see it. So it's going to upload, see here? So this is an example I'm just showing you. So this is how you're gonna upload your all ISO file to the specific data store. So this is my share storage. So any host I go, I, I can see that storage because it's a share storage, right? I upload it on the share storage. Okay, so my ISO file is here now. This is the way you, can, you should do. So, okay, come back here. So say you forget to upload. So you created the virtual machine. Now you need to install the operating system, right? So you upload the operating system ISO file and now go back to your virtual machine, right click on it and go to the edit option. And then what? Go to the CD-ROM and then go to the data store file and then select the data store and the ISO C. If you select this one, you gonna see here, VMR, but I'm, I'm, my target is not to install this one. My target is to Windows, right? So I have to go to here because I have here already. I'm going to expand it a little bit. And, and uh, where? Okay, okay. 2019, I'm looking for 2019. Okay. Win server 2019. So this is this is uh, this is the one I am looking for. ISO file. See dot ISO. Okay. And make sure make sure select this one. Okay. 
like this one. And also sometimes because um, on this 2019, on this 2019 use, uh, I'm showing you from the BM options, you should change this one, boot options. So by default, it, it use e, uh, e, e, uh, sorry, EFI. It's used if, if, if the farmer is, show, is selected as e, uh, EFI, you'll not be able to boot it. So make sure you change it to BIOS mode. If, make sure you check it, okay? Before you boot it. So now it's configured. So I have, if you go back and click CDROM again to check actually you did it or not, see? It's connected, right? It's connected. So everything is done. Now, what do you need to do? Just right click on it and say power on, or you can click from here, power on, anyway, anyway. So you can click here. Now it's, it's power on, right? Where's the machine? Machine is here, right? Okay, go to this machine, open this one. You gonna see the machine is opening here, see? Now it's loading file. It's loading file, right? So how you open it? Immediately, so right click on it and go to the power on, power on option and then on the summary tab, right, click here and then it, it will give you an option, web console, see web console and okay. So now it's gonna show you these options, right? So click next, install. I'm showing you step by step each and every in single and every individual steps. Uh, so I have five or six other machines running from this storage, share storage, my, because I don't like actually the WD storage because the WD storage has a only 500 megabyte of memory. So whenever you have a multiple BMR the virtual machine storage running from the WD NAS storage, so all the time, whenever you're using, is gonna access from your WD cloud storage, right? But WD cloud storage has only 500 megabyte of memory, which is nothing. That's why you will get a poor performance. Anyway, we are not actually uh, not practicing here super speed. We are just wants to know and see actually all kind of VMware flavor. Because if you know the flavor, Anywhere, anywhere you can like find out the flavor or figure out the flavor or install the flavor or implement the flavor, okay? All right, so in here, which one you should select? You have four options. Windows Server 2019 standard, Windows Server 2019 standard desktop experience. So all the time do desktop or de this desktop, data center or standard. So what is the difference between data center standard and data center edition? There's no big difference. If you concern about Hyper-V implementation, in that case, you should go with data center addition. You will get um, more feature for Hyper-V. So for Hyper-V, it's very suitable for data center addition. And in any other case, you can go anyone, standard or data center, it's up to you. The standard edition, make sure you choose desktop experience because if you choose this one, it's a Linux play. Like it's kind of Linux flavor. It's a core edition. So go into the standard desktop experience, not this one, okay? Make sure. Click next. Okay, just give one second. Okay, all right, so now just select this one. Next, custom installation. So I want the whole thing. So you don't need to be audited by default selected, click new and then apply all and okay. It's gonna create a partition. And after the partition is done, you can do the format. Okay. So you can do the format or you can start installation. So select this the big space and you can say click next. And 
you're done. It's going to install automatically, okay? So in the meantime, we don't need to be wait here. In the meantime, what we can do, we can prepare our environment. So prepare our environment means, um, if you guys can remember, okay, let's, let's do one thing. Um, I'm going to my, Okay, software. So I I provide you go. Okay, just give me a second. The tools. So Starwin. So I'm going to download this one, Starwin. Download. I'm going to download this folder. Okay. So when you download a uh, anything from Google Drive is going to be downloaded as a zip file. So it's already downloaded, maybe. Uh, let's see. It's going to be downloaded. Why it's taking too long? It shouldn't be taking long. Okay. It should be done quickly because it's not that big software. Starwind. Also, you can download this Starwind software. I have a license key here. Starwind. It's a free, free software, free license. So you can have a demo. Like this. you cannot do the enterprise level work here, but you can get a flavor of it. That's what I'm going to show you now. Okay. So I have already downloaded here. Where did I download? Uh, my download for here, right? So I'm going to, this is GIF file. I have to extract it. So GIF, I have a 7 GIF. So you can download or install 7 GIF whenever you have it. You need to extract anything from GIF. You can have 7 GIF, then it's, it's pretty easy. And 7 GIF is free tools. It's pretty easy to install. So extract file. And okay, okay, now I have extracted here. So I need actually this software. So the software and the license after I build the virtual machine. So let's see actually uh, where we are right now on the virtual machine. It's 23% done. So we have to wait until it's finished. Then we have uh, some other things needs to be done, which is after it's done, then we have to do some common configuration which uh, I show here uh, on how to create a virtual machine. Uh, so I'll show you again here also. Just let, let's finish this one. All right, so it's look like it's almost done. Very shortly, it's going to be done. So it's the starting is done already. So now it's rebooting the server. So right now, um, on this data store, net storage, right? So if you select this one, uh, and if you go to the BMs, you see all the BMs I have is running from the share net storage. So that's why when I like use those virtual machines, a little bit slow. That's the reason because everything is coming from the net storage. So whenever you have only one host. Uh, you cannot install the first time. First time you need to build Active Directory, right? You need to build DNS, right? So you cannot build those on the local storage because you don't have enough storage on the local. If you have local storage enough, you can install it there. It's not an issue. Later on, whenever you have iSCSI storage, just migrate the storage from local to your iSCSI storage. So I did it on first, I sometimes I do on local storage. Sometimes I do on, because I have a NAS storage and I did on the NAS storage. And that, 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 that time, maybe you will experience a slow performance, but st still it's okay because you don't have shared storage. So whenever you have shared storage, ice storage, you're going to migrate it, right? So I will migrate it the same way. All right, so let's see what's going on. It's going to be 
get ready, right? So, so after you install the virtual machine with Windows operating system, each and every Windows operating system, you have to do some common stuff for each and every virtual machine. If it is a thousand virtual machine, same procedure, same thing, same stuff you need to do. Okay. And I'll show you guys actually, because every time after you deployed or after you install an operating system, if you have to do the same stuff for like 1000 virtual machine, the same stuff, it's a lot of work, right? Why are you gonna do the same kind of settings again and again, again and again? So there is the options in VMware. So you can create a template. I believe I have already template. Uh, maybe no, okay. Yeah, actually I don't have the template. I'll show you guys. I'll make a separate video how to create a template. So whenever you have a template, you don't need to create a virtual machine the way I created. And also, now I'm going to do some common configuration. So you don't need to do the same common conf configuration for each and every virtual machine whenever you need it. Say for example, you are trying to install Beam Backup software or any other monitoring software, right? You need a virtual machine, Windows virtual machine. So you have to do the same process, create a virtual machine, install the operating system, then do the common configuration. Three things you need to do for each and every thousand, thousands of virtual machines, whatever you need, same process. So instead of doing the same stuff again and again, you can create a template for the template. Whenever you have a template, create a machine, like do all kinds of configuration and install all the software, whatever software you need it and make it as a template. And then whenever you need any virtual machine, just depart from the template, that's it. Just one click and next, next, done. Everything is done. So that's what I will create a separate video, how to create a template. And that time I will explain more. Okay, all right, so my machine is ready. So this is the first screen after you install the Windows. So you have to assign a password and this is a username administrator. You see here by default is the username is administrator for the server all the time. For the server, Windows server all the time, the local username is administrator. And if it is a Linux machine, local username is root, R-O-O-T. But for the Windows environment, all the time, it's administrator is a local administrator, local. And this administrator has a lot of power. So you just need to assign a password for this. And again, I'm saying like assign the same password and most of the regression, they do they do the same thing. They use one common password for all their application, all their servers, like this. It's up to you what kind of password you want to assign. Okay, and click finish. Now it's gonna create your profile, uh, like admin, local administrator profile here. Okay, it's done, right? So now. What I need to do, I need to log in. So the after the first login, this is my first task, like right, assign a password, and then you need to log in. So whatever when you're gonna click, because right now I'm using this virtual machine through what? I'm accessing this one through browser. So whenever you use through browser, it's not that much flexible. So that's why you have to type, you cannot copy and paste, you have to type. So hard, okay, whatever the password. Okay, I'm going, uh, I'm almost logged in there. So after I log in, what I have to do? After I log in, I have to do some common configuration, which I'm going to show you, right? So this video is pretty long. So actually I'm trying to show you guys each and every steps, that's why it's long. Okay, so your first job is after you deploy a machine, install BMOR tools. So what's the BMOR tools? If you don't install the BMOR tools, you see here your mouse movement is not smooth and your keyboard not gonna be function. And also some other thing can be happen if you don't have BMOR tools. So your first task is to install the BMOR tools. How are you gonna install the BMOR tools? 
go to the UB center and go to your hosting cluster and select the virtual machine, the one you deployed and go to the summary tab. And you wanna see here, it says BMR tools is not installed on this virtual machine. And just click install and mount it and mount it. So you can, from, you can do it from here or if you go here, all right, it's already done, okay. Or, or you can do from here. Select this one. No, oh, no, sorry. You have to do it from B center. You have to do it from here. And if you log into SXI, then from the SXI, how you can do that? I'm going to show you. Okay, actually, this, this is not the SXI. I'm going to log in. It should be SXI number three, right? Because I put the machine on the three. Okay. Good, okay, good, and so from if you because whenever you have one ESXI and if you create a virtual machine, how are you gonna install uh BMR tools? How are you gonna pull the BMR tools? So that's why I'm showing from both screen. And whenever you first time log in, it's gonna show you like this. Don't click okay with this check mark. Um check it and then click okay. Because I just first First time logged in this host. Okay, I have a virtual machine here, right? So this virtual machine, I need to install what? BMR tools. So how are you gonna install the BMR tools? You see here, BMR tools needs to be installed. You can still go to the action option or or what? Or if you right click on it, uh, go to the console. It should have somewhere here. Okay, gas to us, sorry, gas to us. Gas to us and then you see here, if you go to the guest OS and then install the Beamer tools. So that's how you can push it or you can just click here action and install it. From there, so you're gonna see, the, you're gonna get the same screen. So guest OS and then install Beamer tools. So this is from your ESXI host. And whenever you're accessing from uh, vCenter, then select the virtual machine and so from the summary tab, you're gonna see here and just say install Beamer tools and then say mount it. So it's gonna mount. So it's, now it's gonna, mount automatically, it's gonna mount as a CD-ROM. So now go back here. So this is the server manager. I'm going to minimize it because I have to do something here on the server manager. I'm going to minimize it and I wanna open this one. Which one? This one, file explorer. See here, this is the file explorer. Open it, click here. And you're gonna see, go to the this computer and go to the C drive or see here, is pop up here. So you can click here from here also. It's pop up already. DBD drive, BMR tools. It's already shows here. Or you can go this computer and see here, double click on here. It's gonna install. If it is not then then just open it. So open. And then make sure it is on 64. Set up 64. Right click on it and install it as administrator. Okay. So there's a several way, but when I double click on it, it's gonna it's, it's give me an installation options and click next and click next and click install. That's it. So BMR tools, whenever you have a BMR tools, then the machine is like you'll have you'll have better performance. Your mouse movement, your keyboard and or graphic or graphical things, everything you'll get a better performance. And also see the window, window is pretty small, right? So after this, we will be able to change the window, but it's required to have a reboot. So you can reboot it now, or maybe you can reboot it after you've done all common configuration. So usually I do, I install this one and I avoid to reboot, and then I, I do the other installation, uh, other configuration. So the, what's the other configuration? From the server manager, if you, for for by mistake or for some reason, if you close it, say for example, you by mistake, you close it, right? How are you gonna get it back? So you have to go to the start button and you wanna see here, server manager, open it. And for this one, don't show, click don't show and click okay. So next time it's not gonna show you again. Okay, what it shows? 
So hold the start of the BMR tools is installing, still is installing, right? Okay. In the meantime, we can do what? Okay. Oh, something good. I'm not sure what it shows. Okay. I'm trying to move it here. Okay. Anyway, let's see display. Display settings. If I can make it more bigger. Uh, okay. So I'm, I want more bigger. This one. Change. Okay. Now it's big, right? Now I'm able to see this. It's more better than before, right? Finish. And now it says reboot it, right? I'm not going to reboot it. Okay, I need to do some more st other stuff. So other, what's the other stuff? I'm, I'm actually, I don't need this screen anymore. I need server manager from here, right? Okay, this is my virtual machine, okay? So what configuration you need to do? Actually, it's too much small, right? I'm going to make it, uh, okay. No, I still. Okay. Uh, okay. 150. Okay, it's a little bit better, right? It's a big screen. Or don't do that little 50, if it's too much. Another 25 is fine. Okay. So when you reboot it, it's going to show you whole full screen. Okay. Now go here. Server manager. From the server manager, what are you going to do? For the local server. So this is the common things you have to do for each and every virtual machine, each and every virtual machine. So what are you gonna do from the server manager? You have to go to the local. By default, it's gonna be show you the dashboard, but you have to go to the local server. You have to go to the where? Local server, right? Local server. So from the local server, make sure you change the time zone based on what time zone you are in, what time zone your office, right? So I'm right now in uh, EST zone. So I'm going to change it to EST, uh, which is minus five US and Canada. It's done, see here, it's done, this one. And of course, I have to have a check mark on here. And click okay. So I change the time. You're gonna see here now the time, 3.47 AM because I changed the time. If you refresh it, you will see this change five is ten, right? So this is the one you change, and then you need to assign an IP address for BCN. Actually, which one I is, I have selected here? Let's see which I reserve. Which one is reserve? So maybe this one is for BCN six. Uh, if you look at on my this one, uh, nested BM. Uh, sorry, uh, BCN BM, right? IP number six. Okay. So what's my machine name again? Uh, my machine name is this one, right? I'm going to reserve from my IP spreadsheet. Don't forget to reserve it like this. So you can say iSCSI sends to it. I iSCSI send storage DM. All right. So this is the IP address I'm gonna assign. This machine, right? So remote management, okay, firewall. Firewall, make sure you turn off the firewall. Why are you gonna fire? It sh you shouldn't be actually turn off, but anyway, when you turn off for the beginning, but whenever you add this machine with the domain, and of course your activity environment will have some GPU policy, which will change your settings. But for the beginning, just change it. To turn off, okay. So you turn off this one. Turn off private. Turn off, okay. So domain, private, and public. All three turn off. All three firewall. So three kind of firewall we have. So turn off all, which is domain, public, and private. So I turn off. Sorry, turn off, not on. By default, it was on. I just turn off. See here off. And then remote desktop. 
Okay, allow remote desktop, but don't do this one right now, but later on you will have this one by through the, your uh, GPU policy. So allow remote control. You can say apply and okay. Okay, so refresh and then assign an IP address here. So click here, double click here, and then go to the properties and assign an IP address. You say obtain an IP address and then 192.168.1. What? It's six, right? We select six. And then this 255.255.255.0 because it's slash 24 subnet and the default getter 192.168.1.1, right? And the DNS 10.15, sorry, you know, we already know 192.168.1.4 is our DNS. This is our DNS server, DNS server IP. So, and alternate DNS. So I have a plan, the one, the D, alternate DNS server, secondary DNS server we build on our uh, uh, video number part three, I'll decommission it and I'm gonna make it on the different network and different subnet in a different data center. It may be in our network, uh, Android data center later on. So that's what I have a plan. So and that, what should be the IP address for this? So we already reserve it here. If you look at here, this is my IP spreadsheet and I have a plan to make it uh, 10.15.90.4, but it's not ready yet, but I'm going to assign it for now. 10.15.90.4. It's not exist yet, but it's gonna be eventually it's gonna be exist. Okay, click okay. And click okay. So now if you see here, you are not you you don't have the internet connections. What are you gonna do? Just go here. Uh, okay, and also turn off the IPv6 because we are not using any IPv6, IPv4, go back, go back again and go to the advance and DNS and add, add here 192.168.1.1. And okay, and validate it, okay. So you're gonna validate and hit okay. See, you have internet now. I don't need to actually validate it, it's already have internet. So there's no problem, everything is okay. I just check it, okay, close. So I have internet and everything. And now the last one, I need to change the machine name, see here. This, this machine name is in our, my inventory name. Inventory name, name is my vCenter name. So whenever I have any name, here it is a vCenter inventory name, but actual machine name, you see here, actual machine name is this one, right, it's still now. So I have to change this one. Plus, I have to add this machine with the domain. So if I want to have both together, what I have to do, the first is we, you have to do, so adding a machine with the domain, add a machine with the domain. This is how I, I created my jump machine and this is how I, I added my jump machine. So why I skip this jump machine creation? Because I'm going to show you right now. So you can, that's how you can build your jump machine. So. After you do this, you have to add it with the domain, right? So what are you gonna do? You have need to change the computer name, change. So whenever you install a Beamer tools, you need to reboot it. Whenever you change the machine name, you need to reboot it. And whenever you add a machine with the domain, you need to reboot it. So three reboot you need, but I'm skipping two reboot and I'm, I want one reboot with like including all three together in one reboot. So I'm going to change the machine name. This is the actual machine name. So E L S B T, then B A Virginia, and it's say ice case I S A N ice case is And now domain name, right? So before I add with the domain, I'm going to do one thing. This is this will be wise to have create a computer name. So I'm going to create a computer name. I'm just copying this one. This is my domain controller, right? So I'm going to my active directory where I want my computer. So if you add any machine with the domain automatically, it's gonna be create on your, this is your, this is active directory users and computers. 
So whenever you add a machine with the domain, automatically this machine is going to be come here, come here. So you have to move that machine to the other, other. Um, so for example, uh, you have other OU, and you want that machine to be other OU. Or maybe this is, think about this is not a computer, this is another OU, think about it. And so you want to have a new machine in here. So how are we gonna do that? You wanna create a new com uh, computer object here. The new, then right click on the, any empty space, go to the new and computer and paste it here and click okay. So actually by default it should become in this OU, but if you was to make this computer object on other OU, but I right now I don't have it, that's why I'm showing here, but think about, I have it or you have it, a different name, OU name. So you want to have this machine on different OU. So you have just select the different OU and then right click on it and create a computer of the, like this, like this. But I don't have right now, that's why I'm just adding here. Okay, don't be confused. And I'm going back to my where, uh, here, right? My jump machine uh, through here because I'm actually through here. Okay, so I already changed it, right? And now, what is the domain name? ELS.com. Okay. Click OK. Okay. Now it's asking me to verify with a user because you have to assign a user who has a complete permissions to add a machine with the domain. So whoever has a permissions to add a machine with the domain, you should assign that user account here. So right now I don't have any user. I have a by default, which one is administrator at ELS.com, domain admin user. But if you have your A account, your special uh, administrative account, you can assign your administrative account. Say your account at your domain. That should be here. But right now I don't have any. That's why I'm adding with the default administrative account, A-D-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-A-T-O administrator at ELS.com, which is my default one. But whenever you work for a company or organization, you should have your own AA account, administrative account, or system admin account, whatever you can say. Okay, and click okay. Okay, see here, welcome to the yellow.com domain without any issues. So now this machine will be member of the, it, it, it will show you um, error because I skip some uh, reboot this way. Okay, you must restart, okay? And close and restart. Now I'm done with everything, right? So I'm done. Now what I gonna do? So I have, I want to create some storage, right? And I want to utilize, I have a local storage here. So I, I'm, before I do that, let's try with this one because uh, previously when we tried, let's see, this one is erasing. We still, it has problem. Okay, let's try actually. But I'm, I, I know it's not gonna be happen, but then again, let's try, have it. One more try. Okay, BMFS, click next. No, 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 look like it's not gonna work. It shouldn't take that long. Anyway, skip it. I'll I'll resolve it later on. Okay. So we um think about this is your host. Okay. So you want you have a local data store here, right? Local data store, which is how much? Two point five terabyte. And also I have another one, which is maybe you in your case you have only one, but I'm showing you one, and I I'll add another one because I have another one. That's why. But you want to add only one. Okay. So how are you gonna claim add whole storage? This one to um, okay. This is the machine, right? I need to add extra drive. Right click on it and go to the edit option and see here virtual hardware. Add a new device. You can say hard disk or RAM disk, hard disk. Okay, hard disk. When we click it. By default, it's taking space from your shared storage, which is NAS storage, right? But you can say browse. Okay, when you click browse, it shows you the storage, this one, see here? You can select this one, this storage. Okay, 
Now, how much storage you want as a so terabyte wise? How much? So how many? How much storage you have here? So set out of two point something terabyte, I'm going to add only two terabyte. Two terabyte of storage, and also make sure you see here. Thick provisioning less than zero issues right now. So go with thin provision. So okay, let me explain what is thick provision less than zero, zero and equal to zero and a thin provision. So less than zero that means if I assign less than zero, it's gonna take two terabyte of storage from my local storage and it's not gonna release. It's gonna block. But if you so it's block two terabyte for this virtual machine. But if the virtual machine is not utilized, that two terabyte still is gonna block from my local storage. But if you choose thin provision, it's not gonna block the two terabyte. It's reserved two terabyte, not gonna block it. Whenever the machine need it, it's gonna, it can, it will be able to use it. So that's why for better storage utilization, you should have thin provision. Okay, so I added one, right? This is done for you in your case because you have only one host. But in my case, I have two hosts. So I can add more, add hard disk. Okay, how much storage? I have terabyte, right? Terabyte and two terabyte from here too, okay? And which storage? Browse. This number three, right? Okay. And click. Okay. Uh oh. Okay. Let me power off this machine. Just power off. This is aggressive power off, and this is gracefully shut down, right? Gracefully shut down. This is aggressive shut down. Right now I'm going to aggressive because I I, I still I don't have enough time to go back and give the time. So right click on it, go to the edit option again, and check. Okay, your hard drive is not showing here. Okay, no problem. Add again. Let me do it one by one. Okay, the other thing is, um, in one BM can you do two terabyte? I believe you sh you should do. Two terabyte, you should do. Okay, so say two terabyte, two terabyte of storage, and go to the browse data store, and this is the storage. Okay, and it's a thin provision. So two terabyte second hard disk and click okay. Let's see. Okay. So that means you cannot okay. What is this? In build configuration device zero device new hard disk. Okay. Let's try another way. Go to the edit option. Ah. So there's another option. You can add that storage as a raw device mapping. That's a different story, actually. Okay, let's say hard disk, uh, terabyte, one terabyte. Let's try with one terabyte, one, and, 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 hard drive, storage, browse, this one, okay. And what is this? Host. Maybe the rest of the default. Maybe this one select. What is this? The capacity exited the maximum virtual disk size of the data store. Okay. Okay. Thin provision. Okay. Same thing. Okay, raw device mapping. 
virtual machine add hard disk rdm disk okay rdm disk no rdm disk shows But, 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 you should have okay. When we add the storage, what it shows? Go again. What it shows? Provision 145 GB only. So you have enough space. To add it. Say, let's try with just only thin provision. Oh, see, I have already here. Now it's able to add it. So this one is added from. Hmm. So. That means there is a requirement, maximum, maximum you can take, whatever you choose 40 and how about you can, in, you try, you're trying to increase it. So say one zero two four. Okay, you're able to do that. Okay, edit. This one, 240, 2048, that is two terabytes, right? RS number three is, is taken from here, right? Okay. Okay, it's able to take it, but okay. So whenever you choose terabyte, it's not taking as a terabyte. That's the issue, nothing else. So uh, this is taking, this two terabyte is taken from my, it's showing as a gigabyte, actually it's two terabytes. So it's, it's, it's taking from where? It's taking from my host number three, okay? So this is how we're gonna add it. And this one actually is, is, is taking space from uh, share storage. I'm, I don't want to have it. So I'm going to close it. Do this for, okay, okay. Okay, I don't have any more. Okay, go edit here. So I have number two and then add hard disk. I'm going to edit my, uh, this one, right? So same thing, 20, 48, from where? From where else? From host number two, okay. And, 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 and what? And thin provision. Okay. Oh my goodness. What what happened? <laughs> okay, let's go, let's go with edit. Okay, it's not taking. Okay, add hard disk. 40 is fine. 40 is fine. Just add 40 first, and then we're gonna increase it. Browse this one host. Okay, and then it's gonna be thin provision and edit. Uh oh, 
still you have problem okay anyway let alone because you don't know you don't need to be audit because you have only one host and we are successfully able to add one host storage here see here how much storage here this one we added from our host number three right see here so that's what our target right okay so i'm gonna add it. so actually in reality you maybe most probably you will not gonna see this situation because you will have separate i scary and storage you don't need to make it like this way i'm just trying to make alternative way okay so now you added the storage with the virtual machine but okay now the machine i i, I can use this machine uh from here okay so say for example duplicate okay i'm going to change this machine name and the ip address i know is only six right six okay double click on it so i can now do the rdp this is the rdp process i don't need to log in through this like one through the browser because i have everything on now you can able to access through the rdp because everything is already set up right that's pretty cool okay Okay, so the another important thing is you increase the disk for this virtual machine from the VMware side, from the vCenter side, right? From the virtual layer, but inside the machine, you didn't claim yet. Inside the machine, you didn't claim yet. So you have to claim it. How are you gonna claim it? Okay, you have to go to the storage. Just give me a second. It needs to be done. Uh, like the server method needs to be load properly okay in the meantime we can look at what in the meantime i need i need the tools the one i downloaded so this is my this virtual machine space and i downloaded it on my local machine right so i'm going to copy from my local machine i'm going to copy this one to here so whenever you copy like this it takes a little bit of time but if you go through the um, if I type my uh, my laptop IP address with uh, say C drive or D drive then dollar sign, it it will more easier like it will copy like within short time. But this one takes a little bit time, more time. Okay, I have it. I have the software here already on my download folder. Okay, so. Okay, so you need to claim the storage, right? The one you added. So that's why what, what you need to, so on from the server manager, whenever it's completely loaded, you're gonna see file and storage services, click here and then go to the disk. And, 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 you're gonna see here two terabyte storage is offline. You just right click on it, bring online and yes. And then right click on it. You can say initialize, say yes. Okay. Now right click on it and say new volume and click next and click and next two terabyte next and e drive next and the volume name you can say data store data storage has to or a storage data storage next and create okay so name doesn't matter, whatever one want, you want, you can just provide the name, that's it. Okay. So I have this one. Now I can close, I can uh, close this. So I have already this drive. So I will have two drive now. If you go to the file explorer and go to the this computer, you're gonna see two drives. See here, I have two drives, right? So these drives specially are gonna install. This drive specially are gonna install. So actually, uh, not, not this drive, so this drive I'm gonna use as a high scale storage. How? I'm going to show you now. Okay, data store. So download folder, I, I have the starring, right? I need to install the starring software. So I'm going to install the software, uh, starring software, right click on it. Run as an administrator. 
you have to have this software to have this practice, okay? So I show you guys that the complete beam uh, virtual machine configuration, then um, how to add with the domain. So you're gonna do the same way for your virtual, yeah, for the jump machine, right? Install, next, 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 next. And okay, Require, request time limit, fully functional evaluation key. Thank you, I have a key already, okay? Thank you, I have a key already. Click next and then browse the key. Show the key, key, uh, key, this license. See here? Okay, next. And next, install. So I'll share this software with you guys on, on the desk, uh, description box. So you guys will have it and you can do your practice, okay? So would you like to install this device software, storing device? Okay, okay, install. And finish and launch. Okay, so I'm going to close it and launch the Starwind. So Starwind is going to be launched now. So uh, the iSCSI software, the iSCSI storage, the iSCSI storage concept is you have to have a target and initiator, target and initiator, and also you have to create a loan. So whenever you have completed separate storage system, you have to create a loan. You have to have, you have, to have a storage pool, then inside the storage pool, you can create a loan. L-U-N, loan. L-U-N, logical unit number, loan. So in reality, in reality, whenever you have, say for example, Dell BNX, BNX actually already uh, end of life. So I'm not gonna talk about the Dell uh, BNX storage anymore, but Dell uh, power, uh, sorry, Dell uh, unity storage. So unity storage, what do you have to do? First, you have to have a storage pool. That means you have say 150 terabyte of storage. So with 150 terabyte of storage, you're gonna create a storage pool and inside the storage pool, you're gonna create a multiple loan based on your department or based on your tenant, whatever you want, based on your company's policy and your plan. So we have here only two terabyte of storage. And I'm going to create a separate, separate loan for this. I want to show you how you're gonna create that loan. So maybe one terabyte, you're gonna create, um, one loan for maybe say any department name or anything. All right, we can say, because we don't have any department now, we can say I schedule send 01, I schedule send 02, I schedule send 03, like this, because we don't have anything, right? Okay, so in this software, what do you have to do? It's already loaded, you see here? It's already loaded, so target and we have to select a target and device. So device, right click on it, add a device. First you have to create a device and it's a raw device, raw device. Raw device, third option, click next. So it's, it's locked, right? Raw device is locked, so okay. Virtual CD or DVD, virtual, okay, sorry, sorry, it's a virtual hard disk. Single node, because this one you need it. Uh, this one you need a license, but I have a free license. So that's why I have virtual hard disk. Click next, second option. And then from here, um, image file device, raw disk mapping, snapshot. Allow creating external first virtual disk that reside entirely in the random access memory. Allow creating virtual hard disk that user disk file of storage medium. Raw set of the image file device. I think this one or raw. I think raw. Let's try the raw disk device. And <clears throat> at 32, uh, I think this is not the right one. Anyway, I'm going to try it. GV and you can say, okay, maybe terabyte. 
um, is one terabyte. Click next. Incorrect disk size value, okay. Oh, I think it's not taking that. 1014, 024. Okay. Okay, actually, black. Try with this. Okay, yeah, actually, actually, I forget. It's, it should be image file device. And then mount this virtual disk, create a new virtual disk. Uh, create a new virtual disk. Okay, I think second one. Create a new virtual disk. Okay, click next. Okay, yeah, this is the one. So new virtual disk location and name. So location and name. You have to click here and then See here, we have two terabytes. Let's select this one. It's going to be show here. E under E, you can say N A. This is this is ice cage, right? Send. So you can say send under the send. You can say um. Lon, L U N, Lon, right? Lon zero one. Okay. And what should, what should be the size? 10, 24 gigabyte, which is one terabyte, right? And it say compress. Click next. The CC file cannot be opened because the file is in yours. So what? Okay. I'm not sure what does it mean. See if I Okay, let's do one thing. And so here, just, oh, sorry. I forget. E, right? Send, then slash L-U-N dot I-M-G. You have to use dot I-M-G. See here, file with extension dot I-M-G. Okay. And compress and click next. Oof. Again. Compress next again. How about try with just only five hundred? Yeah. Okay, cancel it. Target. Long zero one. Allow. Next. Next. Finish. And then device. Light click. Add a device. Virtual disk. Next. Image file. Next. L U N dot alum zero one dot I M G image is gonna be one zero two four. Okay. Now it's taking right. So alum zero one image. Click next. Synchronize mode. And here no caching. Click next. And create a new target or existing target. So I have already created target, right? Attached to the existing target. So which on the existing target, this one, right? Click next and next and finish. So I have created one target and then second target. I'm going to create a second target. Uh, it says LUN LUN02, right? Target, allow multiple, click next, next, now finish. Okay. And now device, add a device, virtual hard disk, because we have a, um, another one terabyte. I, we assign only one terabyte, right? We have another one terabyte. Image file, next, create a new virtual, next, and then, 
go here, browse here, select this one, and here, L U N zero two, right? Dot I M G image. Okay, and how much? So maybe this one a little bit less, right? So you can say what exactly one thousand. One thousand. One thousand. Okay. Compress and click next. Okay. Next. And no cache. And then existing one, right? Attach an existing target. So which one? Law number two, right? Next. Next. And finish. So this is think about this is my iSCSI server. Send storage. Think about this is send storage. Now I need to assign it. I need to assign it where? Why oh, it's not showing? Okay, disconnect it. I just disconnect it. And then reconnect it again. Connect. It shows 127 is loopback IP. It's supposed to show the IP address. Anyway, um, you can completely remove and you can add server with the IP address. That's not an issue. You see here LSBP and uh, LSBP DA I send dot ELS dot com. Fully qualified domain name. It has a target. It's a um, device attached. So two terabyte is already configured. And if you if you go here, now you're gonna see what you're gonna see. You see here. Two file is already created. Okay. So now. Think about this machine, never gonna shut down this machine. All the time is gonna be run. So this machine is gonna be act as a share iSCSI SAN storage. This is your SAN storage. Think about this is your Dell Unity storage. That's it, Dell Unity storage. This is the iSCSI storage. So you're gonna, you're gonna add this storage to your environment. How are you gonna add it? Now the challenge is here. So what do you have to do? All right. So come to here, uh, any host, whatever the host you have, okay? This one or this one or this one, whatever the host. You need to add this iSCSI storage with one host, then all other hosts gonna be added automatically whenever you have in a cluster environment, okay? You don't need to add individually add it. But, but you have to have, you have to have what? You have to have a iSCSI, what? For, for adding SKSI storage on your VMware environment, you should have a VM kernel port group. So VM kernel port group means what? If you go to the configuration and go to the VM kernel adapter, you wanna see, you see here VM kernel, what it shows? It shows VM kernel, the motion is enabled, but it should be disabled actually. This is your management. So by default, ESXi management always, by default, ESXi management always what? By default, SXM management always, always have BM kernel adapter, BMK01, right? And also it's using what? Virtual switch, this virtual switch. It's using virtual switch. Which one? You see here, management is a BM kernel, BM kernel. And also it has a virtual machine port group. So you can add a new, switch standard switch or you can with the existing switch you can have a, a another virtual port group it's up to you so in my case what i'm going to do i'm going to i'm going to show you guys how you can add a new switch this is your network set configuration but you have to do it all of you whatever if you have a 50 host you have you have to do it on with your 50 host. That's actually pretty hard, right? To add all those. So what you can do, so add, and I'm, I'm, I'm showing you here, I'm showing you here one thing. Let 
Just give me one second. All right, so you can add it here. I'm going to show you here, uh, add. So you can add with the existing switch, click next. This is here, select an existing switch. By default, it's selected. Or you can have a new standard switch. New standard switch. And by default, is, uh, the MQ is 1500. It's not a problem. Click next. Now it's adding a new switch. And in here, you have to assign a NIC card. So I have three NIC card available. One NIC card I already assigned for my management. And three NIC card is available. So one NIC card, I'm gonna use it for my, and also one more important thing, iSCSI SAN never support dual NIC card. It support only one NIC card. That's also you have to be remembered. So one NIC card, okay. Click next. And if what's, what's the name you can hear, provide here? I. SCSI hyphen SAM. ISCAGISM. That's it. And BLAN, if you have any BLAN, uh, that means from your company network team, if they provide you a network subnet with a BLAN ID, then you can assign a BLAN ID. Otherwise, you don't need to be worried about it. And if you're, if you're, um, what it's called, if your uh, storage system has use some specific MTU, maybe 9,000, then you can change it. Otherwise you don't need to, which is custom. You can change it, but nice, you don't need. And what you're going to do that, which one you are going to use here? So this one is just actually for so your SAM storage, right? As can you say, nothing else. So in here, nothing to be select. Okay, click next. And whenever you are doing any kind of iSCSI storage, in that case, you have to have an IP address. So you have to provide an IP address here. So what's the IP address we reserve for our iSCSI SAN? And if you go here, you're gonna see the iSCSI SAN. See here iSCSI, host number one, host number two, host number three. So host number one is 21, right? So what are you gonna do? 21, right? 21 and this, and the default guard is already there. If it's not matching, then you can say override, and then you can change it, then you can change it. But I don't need to override down, or, or I can do the override. So it's not an issue. Click next, and finish. So I just created a, another switch, standard switch, that called a standard switch with standard port group. Standard switch with standard port group. So I created a standard switch and also I created a standard port group. Now in here, if you want to add any other port group, you just need to have a add network or management adapter. Okay, it's, oh, no, sorry, not management adapter. Uh, edit, 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 no, no, not actually edit. Security, no, 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 not edit. Uh, add network. So you just need to add a network. So if you want to add another uh, BM card network, so for example, Bmotion, he wants to add Bmotion here, right? So use the standard same standard switch, which is switch one. Click next, and you can say B motion. B motion. And from here you can select B motion, or you can change here, see B motion. Right? And click next. Okay, and then IP address. What's the IP address for Bmotion? Just check from here. What's the IP address for Bmotion? 31, right? First source. 31 and this override and then 192.1. One, next, and finish. So now we have a B-motion also, right? So this is how actually you wanna add. So what do you have to do? If you have a multiple host, 50 host, 
You have to do it 50 times the same way. There's no alternative way. You have to do it 50 times. Cinder switch. So, or you can add it on the same switch. Where? On the same switch. How? So you can add. I'm doing, I'm showing you multiple ways actually how you can do that. So the second host, I'm going to do it, not creating a standard switch. I'm going to use the same existing switch, but I'm creating a different VM kernel port group. Click next. The same switch, click next. It's up to you. So you can say I S C S I hyphen send, can you send? Okay. And nothing I'm doing, I'm here. Click next. Just with the same name, exact same name, exact same name. And use IP address for this is of my second host, right? Second host starting from uh, 22. I schedule 22. And okay, and okay. So look at here. The second host, I schedule is 22. Shh. Yeah, it's 22. Okay, go back here. Oh, sorry. Okay, so I add it, and then if you want to add the motion, what are you going to do? Existing next. Here, you can say the MOTI1 the motion. Okay, so select the motion here, or you can select from here the motion anyway. And finish. Oh, sorry, here uh, IP address. So for the motion is 32, right? For the second host. And it's 555 and override. And here, IP address and click next and finish. So you see here, in here, I just use only one switch, but I added two extra port. But all the ports is using this NIC card, one NIC card, which is not safe. So you should have add one physical NIC card here. Manage physical adapter, add. This NIC card, okay, and okay, okay. Now, if you click management, it's just using this NIC card. If it's BM, this one is using both. And if you Sky iSCSI send, it's using both. But I don't iSCSI send. You don't need to both, right? So how you change it? Click here, edit settings. I prefer oh, okay, so it's not here. In here, this three dot, this three dot, edit, and go to the NIC. Teaming, teaming failover, okay, override. Okay, so we're gonna use only, for iSCSI, you're gonna use only BMN1, not zero. Zero is for management, right? So make it down, 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 unused, okay? Okay, so now if you select iSCSI send, it's just now gonna show you this one. And for Bmotion, we're gonna, so now what it shows, both, right? We're gonna, we don't wanna use both. So how are you gonna change it? Just click on three dot, go to the edit, and go to the teaming, and here we don't want to zero because zero is in for management. We make it down, down, unused, and okay. So now, if you click on B motion, you're gonna show the second one, right? So I shows you different, different way, right? And also you can do it the uh, a distributed switch. But distributed switch, I'm not gonna show you uh, this time. I'll show you later on in another video. And now. This host, right? But in your case, you have only one host, but I have three. So that's why I'm going doing this way. Okay. Same way, add network. So for this one again, I'm going to add a new new standard switch. Click next. And add a NIC card. So this NIC card is from the host number three, right? Click next, next. And this is for ISCSI, ISCSI. SN send, I schedule send, and nothing else, right? Click next, and IPv4 address. This one is for uh, host number three, which is 23. If you confuse, you can check here. See, here 23 for SQL. Okay. All right, and click next and finish. And now I have this one, right? Here, separate, right? And I want to add the motion. Okay, for the motion, you need a BM kernel also. Click next, browse. Oh, no, sorry, you don't need to browse. 
I want on this standard switch one, the new one I created. And then D M O T I one B motion, exactly same name, B motion, or you can select it from here. Anyway, anyway, you can do. So you can do here, B motion, click next. The other one I did from here. So this one I'm doing different way, just to show you. And, and also the IP, IP, IP address. And this one, 33. And this, override, override, next, and finish. So I have the motion, I have iSCSI. So iSCSI adapter is available, network is available. Now I need to add the storage. How you can add the storage? I just prepared my environment. So I know I have iSCSI storage and I didn't have the environment. So I just prepared my environment. Now it's time to add the iSCSI storage. So what's the, what is the way to add the storage? Now, actual way I'm showing. So select the host, go to the configuration, go to the storage adapter. And if it is the first time, what do you have to do? You have to add a software adapter. Add software adapter, click here and add software iSCSI adapter, click OK. So it's gonna, within short time, it's gonna create, you see here another one, see here iSCSI. You see here iSCSI target? Here's the iSCSI target, okay? So select this one, see here, select this one. And when you select this one, in here you're gonna say discovery and network study discovery. So add discovery, go to add discovery, add, and then fully qualified domain name or IP address of your iSCSI send server. So we know iSCSI send server IP is, what is the iSCSI send server IP? If you go to the iSCSI send server, this is the send server, right? What is the name of it? This is the name, right? LSBP, this one, right? So this one, right? So you can use IP, fully qualified domain name. Here, fully qualified domain name dot ELS dot com. You can use this one or you can use IP address, whatever you want. So what it shows? BM HBS 64 is recommended. What is VSCAN? So you can say VSCAN, VSCAN the storage. Okay. But it's not going to show. You have to do what? One thing you have to do, which is network port binding. You have to add, add a host. Actually, you know what? You should do first select this one. First, do the network port binding. Add a network port binding. Add and do iSCSI send the one we created and click OK. And then scan. OK. So if you go to the static discovery, oh, it's supposed to become automatically static discovery. If it is not come automatically, you should add. Oh, 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 it's got the target name. So you have to come back here. You have to look at what is the target. And this is the target, right? You have to write down this one. Okay, anyway, just come here. It should be show automatically. So I'm going to delete this one. Remove this one, okay. And uh, scan, okay. So before I add this one, what I should do, I should enable on my, so make sure, remember, 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 uh, first add network adapter. Okay, iSCSI, go to the network port binding, add this one, add our network port group, which one we created. And, and then go to the dynamic discovery, add, and then type 192.168.1.6, right? And now scan it.
devices. Okay, one terabyte is here now. See, it's already here. It's added. And why it just shows only one terabyte? It should show more. The reason is it was not able to discover. Okay, it, and now it's able to discover. Okay, two, two, one, one, and one, two, right? Yeah, learn one and learn two. Okay, so this is the way. See, it shows. So from my host, other host, I have to do the same. Okay, so in here, um, see, it's, okay, in here, it's not right. So what do you have to do in here? The second host is in the under same cluster. So you just need to add a software schedule adapter on the other host, add a software schedule adapter, okay. If you have a multiple host, if you don't have, don't worry about it. Just the one you did, this is the way. So it's, it's already, it shows here. So you can rename it. Uh, it says rocket ice carry. You can say something else. Or you can you can rename it here. You can rename it if you want. Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, So this storage actually came from where? I know this one is from, uh, two terabytes, right? Uh, 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 from host number three, right? So I can rename it because I know this one is, this is, I'm just, just mentioning, it. it's not mandatory, you have to do the same thing. I'm just mentioning two identify actually I have three hosts, so which host storage I'm utilizing, that's why I'm just going to. But in your case, you don't need to do that, okay? So I'm going to rename it. Uh, I'm going to rename it. This one is SL. Okay, it's a local storage disk. Uh, okay, I send from host three. This is just for my note. Don't worry about it, okay? It's just the same thing I'm gonna do here. This for my just for my note. I then three. Don't worry about it, okay? In your case, you don't need to do that. Because I have three hosts, so I need to identify actually. All right, so for this host, I just enable this one, right? I don't have anything right now. And first, what do you need to do, I said? Network port binding, add, and I scan this and what, why is, okay, okay, okay here and then okay dynamic discovery add a dynamic discovery add the ip address okay and then scan together like what it shows if you come here dynamic discovery is study discovery shows to target and see automatically 
is renamed. And now he come here and add I schedule storage. Oh, sorry. Three is done already? Yeah. Oh, three I did it. Okay. So network port binding, add. I schedule send. Okay. And then what do you need to do? Add a dynamic discovery, add the server. What is the server? IP. This is the send server, right? Okay. And then play a scan. Okay. So you're going to see two devices and two path within short time. See, it's two, two. Okay. So that means you are getting this two target you have and device, two device with already named automatically. Now you need to initialize it. So what you did step by step, you have you just first you can you set it up your iSCSI sensor with the virtual machine. This is is it's not you you never gonna see this kind of storage in your entire life in enterprise level. But for your home lab, I'm suggesting you to get a iSCSI send flavor. You should you, you can do that. You can do that. And then whenever you have iSCSI send storage, you need to have a proper network configuration system. We, we create a standard switch and then we enable the software adapter, iSCSI adapter, and then we add the um, uh, iSCSI uh, port group, which one we created, VM kernel port group, and then we get a network port binding and then dynamic discovery. That means what? We added the iSCSI server, like uh, iSCSI server means our send storage server IP address, and it's automatically discovered the target, static target. Now you need to initialize it. Now it's time to initialize. So initialize with one host, then automatically you're gonna see for all other hosts. If it is thousand of the machine in one cluster or two cluster, it's gonna be show automatically. So let's go data store. Or let's right click on, uh, sorry, not data store. Right click on the any, any one of the host or maybe go to the action. And you can say storage, new storage, new storage and BMFS. Next, the same way. Now you see here. All right, my local storage is showing right now here. It's okay. I'm not worried about this local storage. This is my sand storage, right? So this is the sand storage, lawn one. Click next. And click next. There is, oh, sorry. What should be the data store name? What should be the data store name? You are initializing, right? So data store's name should be, you can say, I send hyphen. It's just for, for, for my case, my environment, I have three hosts and three hosts I'm going to add local storage to the send from three hosts. That's why I'm mentioning about my host now, host number also, host, host three and lawn number, LU and lawn number zero one, right? So it is only my, my case. It's not only in your case, okay? You can, whatever you want, you can mention it. Because you will have only one host, right? Click next. And BMF6 or BMF5 is up to you. You can say this one, it's fine. And whole thing or you want separate thing, you can do that like this way and finish. Okay. See here, I have this storage. Now it utilizes the other one, right? So click uh, storage, new storage, PMFS. And now one is left, right? Click next. Oh, oh sorry. Go back, provide the name. And this one is loan number two, right? Click next. And PMFS five. Click next. Whole thing, next, and finish. Within short time, you're gonna see here. Okay, I have two iSCSI sense stories right now. And then what are you gonna do? If you come here, see, <laughs> it's magic. I didn't do it here. See, it's magic, it's here. So if you have multiple hosts in the same cluster, just utilize on one host, it's gonna pop up, it's gonna show up on your other host. It's a magic, right? So that's all.
that's all for um, having a scheduled storage. And so what we learned from this, how to create a virtual machine and how to implement iSCSI SAN on your virtual home lab. Actually, this is not SAN, but exactly the same kind of configuration you're gonna do in your environment whenever you have a real SAN storage. But configuration is same, exactly same. Be confident, exactly same, okay? All right, um, I think it's a long video. So this is my part four video and what do we cover so far? We cover here, oh, what happened? Uh, we cover here, these eight options. And I believe you guys understand the six, which one I skipped, right? Same process. So in the fifth video, what which I should start, So I covered eight and seven point five today, and what is that? What is the nine? Number nine. Oh, sorry, number nine also covered. Sand storage is covered already. Eight, sorry, seven point five, eight, and nine is covered. Now ten. Where is the ten? Where is the ten? Mm, okay. So next, fifth video fifth part will be nested esxi that nested esx so we're going to learn how to create a nested esxi environment but again in reality you're never going to see nested esxi but why i'm going to show you nested esxi because you want to build your own vmr environment right with one physical host so with one physical host you will not get the complete vmr flavor so i want to give you guys a complete vmr flavor which is to build two data centers one, and remote data center, which is in different state, different zone, different location. So that is what, at least for each location, you should have two hosts to have a cluster system. So I'm gonna build, so I'm gonna build total five um, nested ESXI, which is gonna be a virtual type. In reality, you, you're never gonna see it. Virtual nested ESXI. And on, on the, those nested ESXI, so two are gonna build for New York data center and three are gonna build for Virginia data center. So two different network, two different subnet. And that's how you're gonna get a real flavor, real flavor, enterprise level, real flavor. So that one we're gonna do for our fifth video. So until then, watch this video from first video to last video. And also I'll share how to create a virtual machine the separate video, uh, uh, I'm gonna put the link on my description box and also I share with this one in the description box. And if you guys have any questions, anything, you can just comment. And also one thing I'll, uh, I'll ask to everybody, which is please, if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And also if you feel it's help you, share with your friend or your colleague and don't forget to click the bell icon to get my next video update. Till then, uh, stay safe. Thank you. Th thanks for watching uh, my video. And I'm going to stop the share now. So I'll see you guys on my next video, which is part five, okay?